Now, just to check you're paying attention, here's your starter for ten. What do the following have in common? The jet engine, the steam engine, the hovercraft, yes, that's really what it is, setting off for the first time across the channel here in 1959. And in case you thought it's all to do with transport, it's not quite that simple. Here is the telephone. Well, I'm sure you've got it. They are, of course, all British inventions, shining examples of our engineering heritage, a heritage many believe has now been abandoned. Today, all three party leaders launched a new prize for British engineering. The Queen Elizabeth Prize will be awarded every two years for a groundbreaking advance in engineering. And they're making it pretty much worth the effort. The clever engineer will head back to the factory with a million quid. So why do we need to bribe people to get into engineering these days? And is it what Britain needs to help emerge out of recession? Well, I'm joined by Paul Westbury, chief executive of Bureau Happold, the engineering firm, and by 17-year-old Ahmed Siddiqui, who's planning on studying engineering at university. So, Paul Westbury, we produced engineering titans of the past. Why not now? Now we're experts in law, accountancy, banking. Why not engineering? You know, I think it's about time we really stood up and started shouting and celebrating those people that make things, create things, invent things. And, and engineers are the profession that it, it enable exactly that to happen. And, and the biggest problem that the profession often has is that we're just too quiet about it. And, and you say... So you don't think there's a problem? You think we're good no. at engineering, we just don't shout about it? Exactly that. Because I think engineers get so focused on solving the problems that are in front of them, they don't spend enough time shouting about it. So what better way today than to start shouting. And, and what better way than to start shouting with that sum of money to encourage people to, to really sit up and listen. And our three party leaders of our three biggest parties um, effectively said, engineers make the world go round. Well, we, we have the political will to make space for engineering to do exactly this, to lead the way, and let's celebrate it. Ahmed Siddiqui, what attracts you to doing engineering at university? Uh, primarily the fact that we can actually take that metaphor of building our future and creating something literal out of it. Um, the, the aspect that actually attracted me originally was the fact that I can, instead of just going into something like law or politics where I'm in dialogue with other people, I can actually create something that's sustainable for the future, for young people, for older people, for all generations. And uh, I'll be using my hands for that. But you, you've obviously thought about law or politics or yes. something like that. So is there, I mean, come on, let's be honest. If Goldman Sachs comes up to you with a, a big checkbook, you're not going to then say, actually, I'd like to carry on making lawnmower parts, are you? Not particularly, no. But um, I think that's one of the great attributes about engineering and going for an engineering degree is just the fact that you can come out of university and not just do an engineering job. Um, it's one of the few degrees that you can actually go into all traits of life. You can go into um, parts of medicine, for example. You can even go into politics with that. Uh, one of the aspect, one of the future careers I wanted to go to was actually parts of the media not just going with a media degree, which is quite boring and limited, but going with an engineering degree and showing that I'm not a one-trick pony and I have interests outside of that as well. Paul Westbury, how do you prevent Ahmed Siddiqui being poached by Channel 4 News or Goldman Sachs? By challenging your language. You, know, you talked about taking the million pound prize back to your factory and if Goldman Sachs you know, would, would draw you away from making your lawnmower parts, that's the kind of stuff we've got to change because engineers are problem solvers and they do that from places other than factories. Um, they do it in design offices. They do it in wonderfully diverse, creative, innovative, talented teams. But they money is a problem, isn't it? You can't compete time. with the city salaries, can you? Um, and of course you can't for some people, but actually for a large number of people you can. And we talk about the tiny proportion of people in the city that earn these phenomenal amounts of money and probably can't live with themselves. But financial services still brings home the bacon for Britain, doesn't it? Ten percent of our income from financial services. Shouldn't we really concentrate on what we're really good at, which is financial services rather than engineering? Actually, engineering in this country brings in a higher proportion of our GDP than financial services. What, uh, Ahmed Siddiqui, what do you dream of building? What is your construction project or engineering project that you really want to build? Uh, one of the aspects of engineering of life that I find quite, uh, that I'm passionate about is actually aeronautical engineering, something, that, you know, creating the dream that humans, on, you know, by, their, by themselves, they can't actually go out and fly, but the fact that we can actually build planes and construct things that actually take us to, you know, rockets to the moon, uh, going out, um, Virgin are using um, engineering in order to actually get rockets to go out into space. Um, and that's one of the areas that, you know, I, I'd love to be a part of, um, pioneering, you know, the human race going out into the future 
and uh, creating something new, something brand new, something we can actually sustain so future generations can actually build on that as well. Ahmed Siddiqui, good luck. Paul Westbury, thank you very much for coming in.